Mi now ask him, Honorable Prime Minister of Lujimi, lo Papua New Guinea, lo make him talk talk long hand. Mr. Speaker, let me firstly appreciate and thank you and all members of parliament on both sides of the house for allowing and welcoming my good friend, the Australian Prime Minister, Right Honorable Anthony Albanese, who have just addressed our people's national parliament. I want to thank Prime Minister Albanese and your entire delegation for finding time, firstly, to visit Papua New Guinea. The address to our People's House, the National Parliament, is indeed historic and entrances this peculiar shared history of our two nations. Mr. Speaker, in case young Papua New Guineans and Australians forget, we were a territory under Australian sovereignty before 1975. This time, 50 years ago, we were all Australians, and the Australian Labour Party was in government, and the then Prime Minister, the Honourable Gulf Whitlam, supported the fathers of our country, Papua New Guinea, led by none other than Sir Michael Somare and hence our nationhood was granted. And so it is again in 2023 that the two parties, the Great Australian Labour Party and the Pangu Party 48 years later meet to consolidate our common bond and consider the path for the future as a family nation, as family nations. Mr. Speaker, for the first time, an Australian Prime Minister makes a warm, reassuring statement in our national parliament, yeah. indicating that both nations are equal and are equal development partners and will grow side by side going on into the future. Mr. Speaker, I noted that Prime Minister Albanese recognizes our shared past and also identify most, if not all, of our contemporary issues in our bilateral relationship, that both countries must work for the betterment of our two people. Mr. Speaker, I would like to inform you and this parliament that this afternoon our bilateral meeting will take place discussing all issues pertaining to how we want our relationship with Australia to be fine-tuned. Issues like immigration and visa, education and work opportunities, commerce, trade and investments, including export of our products, sports development, including NRL bid, access to continued soft credit and grant facilities from Australian facilities that are available closer to home, support for our law and justice sector, including police, military exchanges, public service work exchanges, and of course the alignment of Australian aid programs to our country's development priorities will be amongst those issues that we will discuss in our meeting. Mr. Speaker, I don't want this historic address to our People's House to be wasted, this is a bilateral milestone between Australia and PNG. In the face of Papua New Guinea's 50th independence anniversary coming up in 2025. My friend, the Australian Prime Minister is here in our parliament listening, and I want to assure you, Mr. Speaker, we shall prosper our national development agenda with Australia so that Papua New Guinea becomes better stronger and safer in all senses, especially from the economic independent perspective of our present generation of leaders. As it was Australia 
Labour Party and Whitlam in 1973 to 1975 that allowed Papua New Guinea, Pangu Party and Somare to drive into political independence. So must it be Australia today, Labour Party today and Albanese in 2023 to assist Papua New Guinea, assist Pangu Party and my generation of leaders to drive PNG into the economic independence destination we so sought. Mr. Speaker, you, have, you and me have agreed many times that a nation claiming to be political independence without economic strength is a weak nation. And in that focus for economic gain, Papua New Guinea and Australia is operating presently under the Comprehensive Strategic Economic Partnership Agreement we saw signed with my government and the previous Morris government in 20, Morrison government in 2020, rather. Today's coming of Prime Minister Albanese as a touch of bettering the heights we have reached with Australia in the last three years. An economically independent Papua New Guinea is a better, stronger, safer Papua New Guinea. A better, stronger, safer PNG is a better, stronger, safer Australia and the Indo-Pacific region. One cannot talk about Indo-Pacific without progressing the Papua New Guinea agenda because we are right in the heart and the center of this confluence, the Indo-Pacific confluence. In order for PNG to participate in a safer Indo-Pacific region, Papua New Guinea herself must be stronger economically. Papua New Guinea must be a strong economic nation. So Mr. Speaker, our focus on ramping up trade, business free, free flow of exports, and our people to Australia will be a main issue of discussions with the Australian leadership we are so privileged to have today. This is not just a social conversation. It is deep economic strategy of our nation. To my brother, Prime Minister Albanese, let me place my people to, on my people's handset my great appreciation of you taking the trip to PNG and thus consolid consolidating our government-to-government -government relationships. But rather for me, more importantly, the people-to-people -people relationship must be consolidated. And even greater, the business-to-business -business relationships must be consolidated. And my heart is warmed hearing from your statement that you are in total embrace of the key policy initiatives of this Pango government, especially in the face of strengthening the economic gains of my country. And I sincerely look forward to our meeting later today. Mr. Speaker, on behalf, on your behalf and our people's behalf, let me pass through Prime Minister Albanese, our people's appreciation, and thank you all help, all menace of help, Australian people, mm. Australian governments, and Australian leaders, mm. past and present, have rendered to our country the last 48 years, 47 years past, and more so recently during the COVID-19 times, the help from Australia assisted our recovery efforts. And it would be unfair of me not to place our appreciation in this moment when you are with us in our people's house. Australia is not just our bilateral partner, but a parent nation to us, for you bettered us in 1975. And since then, PNG is littered with so many inputs and imprints are obvious. Assistance like AIDS and grants, infrastructure development, your late, latest budget support to my government, the credit finance accessing, and of course, importantly, the human resource developments that we continue to embrace and support, your foreign direct investments to Papua New Guinea, and lastly but not the least, many of our Christian churches that continue to find support from Australia. Let me say on behalf of the entire people of this country, from the youngest to the oldest, our sincere appreciation for Australia's continuous help to Papua New Guinea. Australia has been the biggest helper to our national development endeavors. 
And I want to say a hearty thank you. And may I say my generation of leaders here today in Parliament from the both sides, I want to convey the opposition leaders uh, an apology on his behalf for his uh, lack of presence here. I hope he's well for you to meet him later. He did inform our Parliament a few days ago he was feeling unwell, and so I do apologize for his lack of presence. But we, on both sides, are in full support and I appreciate your coming here, and we say we do not take Australia for granted. We do not take Australia for granted, and we look forward to work with your leadership in your country for a mutual benefit for both countries going into the future. In the last three years, we have started massive reform work based on our focus to take back our PNG and put it on the road to full economic independence our father's generation saw in 1975. These reforms include fighting corruption head on, and we have thus set up the Independent Commission Against Corruption. This reform includes us setting up the Sovereign Wealth Fund so that we save for the, our children's generation. This reform includes reforming our public service and our state-owned enterprises, working with multilateral stakeholders like IMF and World Bank and ADB, and key amongst them is merit-based appointment in those key agencies of state, including our state-owned enterprises. Economically, we are focused on our fiscal consolidation pathway. Going forward into the future, we will be pursuing aggressive debt reduction strategy once we come out fully from the clutches of the global economic turbulences caused by COVID-19 and the, lately the unfortunate Russian-Ukraine war. We are also spreading, Mr. Prime Minister, through you, Mr. Speaker, all our development efforts throughout all parts of our country, leaving no place behind, no child behind, including the spatial autonomous region of Bougainville. Above us, some reforms we are doing, so Mr. Prime Minister, we rest assured that all help Australia is rendering to PNG is in good, safe, and trusted hands of Congo Party, your partner since 1975. Mr. Speaker, on your behalf, I want to wish our good friend and brother and the Prime Minister of Australia, the Right Honourable Antonio Albanese and his delegation, a pleasant stay and a safe journey to WeWork Isipik to pay respect to the first Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, the father of this nation, the great Grand Chief Sir Michael Thomas Somare, a jester we shall not forget. On this note, I conclude by wishing you and your official delegation a very successful trip, a safe stay over, and may God Bless you and take you safe back to Australia. May God Tadagali Wape or Yesu, as we say in PNG, bless you always. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Parliament, Milak Tuksawil Sam, the Honorable Prime Minister of Australia, Baik Sim Malalo Blongenau.